Hi, I'm Brad Young with the North Carolina Institute of Political Leadership, and today we're talking about state politics journalism. And to do that, I'm joined by Kyle Villamain from an exciting new publication, The Assembly, here in North Carolina. Kyle, thank you so much for being here. Uh, and I'll start with the first question, probably the one that you get most frequently. What is The Assembly, and uh, why should people read it? Yeah, it's great to, great to be here, Brad. So The Assembly is a relatively new publication. We're a year old. And what we do is long form journalism about the state uh, and specifically about power in North Carolina. Uh, one of the things that uh, we believe is that there's not enough of that deep dive enterprise coverage as it's called, where a reporter gets to spend weeks or even months learning about figuring out, finding revelatory information about uh, subjects in North Carolina and then presenting them in nuanced complicated ways. So uh, every week we publish a big long form story about North Carolina, about its I uh, ideas in the state, institutions, people, uh, and then send them out to a growing list of folks who uh, pay us a little bit of money each month and, and make it all work. So one of the unique things that I really liked about, uh, about the assembly was that combination of long form and short form. Uh, why is it important to have both? And, and how do you approach those two types of content differently? Yeah, you know, I think from our standpoint, uh, things that are complicated are tough to communicate in a thousand words, right? Sometimes a story, a issue, um, a, a tension point needs more words, um, needs more length, needs more complexity. And so uh, oftentimes we're doing big deep dives on, on a story that take 3000 words, right? This long form uh, type approach. Um, or, but sometimes that, that's not needed, right? And people have short, um, not short attention spans, but but short um, short amounts of time, right? There are a lot of things that we can do with a day, and sometimes you you don't want to take twenty five minutes to do do a, a long dive, right? Um, so we want to present things in the way that's that's most convenient, and sometimes that means quick a quick hit, and sometimes it means a much deeper, longer dive. And when you're looking at who you believe your audience is in North Carolina, uh, who do you think those people are? Or how would you define your typical reader? Yeah, uh, the typical reader for us is going to be someone who already cares, right? Uh, these are folks who, who probably read the NNO or the Charlotte Observer or RAL, right? They have some familiarity with what's happening in the state, but they want, they want more, right? Uh, think of us kind of as the Atlantic to the New York Times, the Wall, the Wall Street Journal, right? Uh, folks uh, probably know who, you know, know who the big players are, but um, want to hear the backstory behind things. And, and that's where we come in. So in, in shifting gears from, from the micro to the macro, looking at just the landscape of, of coverage in, uh, in North Carolina state politics, uh, how would you assess the current state of play, uh, where things are, you know, for a long time, it seemed like we were very focused on, uh, on the decline of newspapers and the, the shrinking mm -hmm. sizes of newsrooms. But now it seems like there's a lot of exciting things and new, new technologies that are being put to work. Yeah, I think the bleeding has stopped in many ways. Um, the question will be, how do you grow back, right? Because uh, we're clearly not, we, we don't have enough capacity in the journalism world as is. Um, but it does seem like the, the major legacy papers are now in a position where they can think about adding some roles and not, you know, what's the next round of cuts. So, so that's a really exciting place to be. Um, but we're also seeing a lot of new growth, and that comes in the form of, of small outlets like um, Charlotte Ledger, which is, you know, based in Charlotte, does business news, but also expands beyond that. It's a small uh, couple person shop that does great work. Uh, to outlets like Ed and C, right, which are now, gosh, I forget how many folks they have full time, but you know, maybe fifteen or twenty folks uh, doing great education reporting. Um, those are all new media outlets that I think are filling really interesting niches. Uh, there's a lot more to do, and I think no one in journalism says uh, we've got enough. Right, we need more reporters. We need more folks on the ground. Uh, and one of the things that the assembly wants to do is fill its role really well and support everyone else who are filling their own roles, right? 
we'll, we'll, we'll always need folks at city council meetings. We'll always need deep explainers on, you know, uh, on school choice or on um, the new pedagogy innovation in, in you know, education. Um, and we'll also need the deep dives into, you know, a profile of, of Phil Berger or Roy Cooper or Steve Troxler, right? So different, different needs and different outlets will fill them. Um, long way of me answering your question, Brad, to say uh, there is positive growth, I think, in, in the, the North, Carolina, North Carolina news scene. And one of the things that you mentioned profiles, but one of the things that was interesting to me about kind of your mission statement was also the institutions. Uh, yeah. And how central is that to, um, to, to what you do? And, and how do you go about addressing that, that part of, of your, your mission? Yeah, I, we see institutions as almost our core coverage subject that we were way of me saying that, but um, they are so central, right? So my my previous role before I uh, entered the journalism world was actually in higher ed. And I worked for Margaret Spellings uh, when she was president of the UNC system and, as a speechwriter. And I think one of the things that I noticed was there, are, there were good reporters reporting on UNC, but there was, uh, considering its size, there really wasn't that much reporting, right? Here's a big consequential institution doing good things, bad things, uh, a mix, but almost to, to, a, to a frightening degree, unexamined things, right? Uh, there wasn't a lot of, of big enterprise coverage. Things were covered when they kind of hit the news, you know, kind of hit, hit the fan, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, and what I realized is that there needs to be better investigative, but also just enterprise coverage of the institution as a thing uh, outside of the, the crisis moments. And you know, UNC is one of the best covered institutions. So, you know, you take that uh, kind of crisis of coverage in a way, every other institution in the state is in a worse place, right? Um, so we see core to our mission as covering the institutions, the power centers in the state, because um, there's a lot of news there that's not being told. Well, looking at now that you're a year in, what have you learned uh, and what are you looking forward to for the next year? Yeah, I think we've learned that, that there are a lot of really good reporters out there uh, who can write big stories. And right now we're all freelance. And so we, we hire really good folks to spend a lot of time on a story. And we found that that model works, that we can get really good reporters to, 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 to dive in. Um, you know, I think that we're still figuring out exactly the balance of coverage that we need. And, and by balance, I mean issue type, right? So does the state want more uh, higher ed reporting, more environmental reporting, more business news? Um, and, and they want all of it, right? But the right mix is going to be really interesting. And um, there are lots of, lots of people, lots of institutions, and lots of, um, lots of good and bad things happening. And we, we have limited resources. And so uh, as we grow, we're going to make some hard choices about what to cover and what to prioritize. And uh, it'll be an exciting uh, question to tackle this next year. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. I really do appreciate your time. And everyone, I encourage you to go out and, uh, or not go out, stay at home, read on your phone, <laughs> wherever you can find the assembly. They do great work. And I'm looking forward to seeing what they can accomplish in the next year. Uh, so thank you so much, uh, Kyle. I hope to talk again with you soon. And uh, everyone else, we'll see you again next week. Thanks, Brad. Appreciate it.